What's up, Giants fans? Back at it with another New York Giants video. And in this video, I want to talk about the Giants' shocking Week 5 victory over the Seattle Seahawks on Sunday out west. 29-20. to 20. Boy, did that game have me on the edge of my seat, and I hope it sure did to you as well. But before we get into that, folks, our friendly, shameful, uh, shameless reminder to please check us out on all of our social media platforms on Instagram, Twitter, and YouTube at Big Blue Avenue. We appreciate everybody's support. Now let's get in to the Giants and the Seattle Seahawks. Giants improved to 2-3 and three on the season thanks to an Isaiah Simmons uh, block on a potential game-tying field goal by Jason Myers, returned by Gunner Bryce Ford Wheaton for a 60-yard touchdown. Um, overall, this was a game that the Giants played really well. They had a lead throughout majority of the contest. They dominated time of possession. They felt like Seattle barely had the football, uh, but it got off to a rough start, similar to the Giants' win in Week 3. In fact, each of the Giants' first two wins of the season, they were down 7 nothing early. Uh, this week, the Giants got out to an awesome start. They got it down to Seattle's one half yard line, and Eric Gray fumbles the ball right as he's about to break the plane for a score. Rayshon Jenkins takes it back for a 100 yard fumble return touchdown. The Giants are in a 7 0 hole. No Malik neighbors, no Devin Singletary. A lot of new guys had to step up this week. Um, outside of that gray fumble, I thought the Giants offense was clicking from the get-go. We saw a couple nice screen passes to gray prior to the fumble. They were getting the ball. Uh, short passing to Wandale Robinson. The deep ball was working with Darius Slayton. And even Theo Johnson a little bit. Theo Johnson in this game had five receptions for 48 yards, both career highs. Um, and after that gray fumble, we saw a lot more of Tyrone Tracy uh, really, really good performance by him. 18 rushes for 129 yards, and I believe he had 7.2 yards per carry, which is absolutely insane. Uh, I was looking at the number for a second. I was like, wait a minute, seriously? Um, yeah, Tracy was that good on Sunday. Daniel Jones had two touchdown passes, went 23 of 34 for 257. No pick, sacked three times, also had 11 rushes for 38 yards. Uh, Daniel Jones has put together four consecutive quality NFL starts, and this has gotten him back into the good grace of some Giants fans. I think the less pessimistic ones. Um, I still think there are a lot of concerns about Daniel Jones going forward for some people, but for the time being, he's played really, really well. And you know what? He played well against the Blitz this week, too, when Seattle sent pressure. Jones was 13 of 17 for 130 yards, two touchdowns. And again, no Malik Neighbors, no Devin Singletary. You can credit the offensive line. You can credit the defense getting seven sacks. The Giants don't win this game without the performance of Daniel Jones. He was absolutely phenomenal, phenomenal out there. Um, Darius Slayton had eight catches for 122 yards and a score. That's not a typical Darius Slayton stat line. Credit to Daniel Jones. Slayton also probably should have had more if he didn't drop one pass uh, early on. Wandale had his typical stat line, six catches, 36 yards, one score. Um, so, yeah, overall, the Giants really, really impressed on Sunday. The pass protection was awesome. John Runyon, John Michael Schmitz, and Greg Van Roten were phenomenal. In the interior, Jermaine Illuminor was the best one at right tackle. Zero pressures on 40 pass blocking snaps. Had an 84.2 pass pro grade. And, folks, you could argue that the biggest and most important upgrade from the Giants from last season to this season was that right tackle position. They went from Evan Neal to Jermaine Illuminor. And some may argue that Illuminor might be the Giants' best offensive lineman right now. We know overall Andrew Thomas is – the best lineman on this roster. But throughout the first five weeks of the season, Jermaine Illuminor has statistically wise been the best mover in pass protection. Um, Andrew Thomas gave up a sack and two pressures, still had a great game. Uh, tough matchup for him on the edge too with Derek Hall. John Runyon, zero pressures. He was perfect. John Michael Schmitz, just one. Greg Van Roten, one QB hit and two pressures. So overall, the offense was great. The Giants sacked Geno Smith seven times. And now Joe Shane made 
critical moves on the offense this offseason, but he also made critical moves on the defense. Going out and trading for Brian Burns, gave up a couple draft picks for him. You know, people were kind of busting this up, saying, oh, he's going to be a bust in New York. Well, Brian Burns has really showed up, and it's benefited the interior in Dexter Lawrence. Dexter Lawrence had three sacks on Sunday, totaling his sack total to six on the season. That is already more sacks than he had last season. Um, Closing in on his career high as well, he's not too far off from that. Uh, The Giants, this defense reminds you of of old times. 22 sacks through five games, and you know what? That leads the entire National Football League. Props to Shane Bowen, man. Um, A lot of people thought this was a boring hire, which on the surface it might have been, run-stuffing guy, you know, prone to giving up chunk pass plays. But let me tell you something. They've responded. They've stopped the run. Kenneth Walker, Zach Charbonnet couldn't get anything going. Now, granted, Seattle doesn't have a good offensive line, but the Giants took advantage of that. Also defensively, one thing I want to say, too, the Giants gave Seattle more of a three-safety look on defense this week. We saw a lot of Dane Belton out there on the field with Tyler Newbin and Jason Pinnock. Newbin, another rookie who has really been good this season, nine tackles, tackle for loss, and a fumble recovery. Uh, Belton had six tackles. Pinnock always out there flirting on the line of scrimmage and DB coach Jerome Henderson made it a point to call out Deontay Banks this past week saying, look, man, you haven't been playing well. You have to step up and play like a former first round pick, the number one corner on this team. And Banks played an outstanding game. Six stops, three passes defended, um, only gave up two receptions on the day. And he really contained DK Metcalf. You didn't hear his name called much at all. Last year when the Seahawks blew out the Giants, Metcalf was all over them. So I think it goes to show you right there the development from year one to year two. And I'll be honest, the first four weeks, Banks was having a sophomore slump. He was. I mean, it didn't help that the Giants were without a Dory Jackson and Drew Phillips for a week or two, and they came back on Sunday, so that likely benefited the secondary. But Banks himself had to play better, just better technique. That's all on him. And you know what? Those three passes defended, he looked really, really solid out there. Flott played a little better as well. I mentioned Dexter Lawrence with the three sacks. That's a career high for him in a single game, by the way. Nunez Rocha's got in there with half a sack. DJ Davidson had two sacks. Uh, Yeah, DJ Davidson, a guy who didn't get much playing time his rookie year. Last year, he was used sparingly. He was inactive a lot. You know, and, and this year, getting the time to play a little bit more. Now that Leonard Williams has been off the team for a year, speaking of which, now Seahawk Leonard Williams, who he really wasn't a factor this game either. I know he wasn't 100%, but the Giants really showed up. Brian Burns had a sack and two passes defended. Kayvon Thibodeau had half a sack. They were getting QB hits on the quarterback, Geno Smith, who's not a mobile quarterback. I think other than a couple two um, plays where Smith had wide open lanes to scramble due to excellent coverage, The Giants' defense looked near perfect in this game. This was the best defensive performance I think the Giants have put on in quite some time. Now, you could argue the last drive, they were being a little sluggish. They they were were giving up some chunk plays underneath, you know, Jackson Smith and Jigba, uh, Noah Fant, guys like that. But all in all, a performance for the defense. And I'm going to give the offense a close A-minus this week, uh, considering how shorthanded they were, and they handled that with – um, grace, in my opinion. Special teams, too, was huge. We talked about the Isaiah Simmons blocked kick. That was returned for a score. Greg Joseph, three for three on field goals this week, has now made his last eight field goal attempts over the last two games. Brian Dable refused to commit to him after he missed his one attempt two weeks ago. Well, last week, he knocked through five out of five. This week, three out of three. It's safe to say Greg Joseph will be on this team for at least the next month while Graham Gano still recovers from an injury. Giants were 7-16 on third down, just a tad under 50%, and they outgained the Seahawks 420 to 333. And most important, guys, the discipline. Playing in Seattle is a tough place to play. Lumen Field, it's not easy at all. You know, the 12th man is rocking. It was voted years ago as one of the toughest places to play. And I'll never forget the 2005 game where Luke Pettigrew had five false starts in a game. The Giants were flagged 10 times. The Giants held the ball for 37 minutes and only committed two penalties the entire game. 
And one of them was that, you know what, taunting on Darius Slayton. So now my question is this, right? With the Giants at two and three, Daniel Jones is playing well. The offensive line looks brilliant. The pass rush is starting to get there. Are the Giants back? That's the next question. You're two and three. You go back home against the struggling Bengals team on Sunday Night Football outside of Joe Burrow and Jamar Chase. They look awful. And you're starting to stare in the window and say, hey, these next three games, we actually have a chance. Um, You know, they have Cincinnati this week. They have Philadelphia the following week. And then I forget who's after that. But it's going to be an interesting road for Big Blue to see if they could start stacking some wins together and potentially get in the playoff mix come midseason. And it all starts on Sunday night, getting a win on prime time. But let's see what happens. There's a good chance the Giants could get both Malik Neighbors and Devin Singletary back for this game. Again, minor things to clean up, but overall, boy, did the Giants impress me on Sunday. It was an all-around team effort. You have to give Daniel Jones his flowers. Offensive line is brilliant. The play calling by Brian Dable was amazing. And this Giants team, I'm not going to say they're a good football team yet, but they're getting there. There is life in this football team. They are going to compete all season long. And I'm not going to say, oh, my God, the Giants are definitely back. Let's be real, guys. Seattle's three wins were against bad football teams. We're talking about the New England Patriots, the Denver Broncos, and I think the third was the Carolina Panthers. That explains everything to you right there. And The Broncos are no slouch team, but – early weeks of the season, rookie quarterback. Seahawks don't have many impressive wins on their resume. Giants go in, they get a win against Seattle, and let's see if they can carry that momentum. Folks, appreciate you all tuning in watching this video. Reminder, we do an hour weekly live stream on Wednesday night. Special start time, 8 p.m. Central. We're going half an hour early this week. No Sam, but I'll have a uh, special guest co-host excited to bring him on. If you are new to the channel, make sure to follow us on Instagram, Twitter, and YouTube at Big Blue Avenue. Make sure to smash the like button on this video. Ring the bell for notifications. Leave a comment if you got any questions. I appreciate you all tuning in. And without further ado, let's go Big Blue.